Hi there, and welcome to I'll Knit If I Want To. I'm Andrea Maui of Drea Renee Knits, and this is where I try my best to answer some of your questions. Today I am wearing the Mackworth Pullover. This is a sweater I designed a few years ago, and it uses ritual dyes. I believe the base is called Maven. It is a fingering weight, I think Rambouillet. <laughs> Lots of I thinks here, uh, but I love it. It's very slubby and just delightful and um, still one of my my go-to sweaters all these years later so I will of course link to that below I also think this would be a pretty good beginner-ish color work sweater because most of these motifs are pretty little so it's pretty easy to manage the floats if I'm remembering correctly all right let's jump in oh Quick bit of housekeeping, I was notified by a couple of you, thank you so much, that you had gotten an odd reply to your comment saying you'd won something and I checked it out and it looks like somebody snagged my photo and made like a bot account. I have reported it everywhere and blocked them and deleted and it should be all taken care of, but yes, I was not hosting any kind of giveaway. I would never ever ask for you to text me and I certainly wouldn't ask for any money. So if you received any kind of weird reply like that, please ignore it. Please know I would never ask you for that kind of information even if I was hosting a giveaway, which I don't host giveaways here. So um, at least I haven't any time <laughs> uh, in my recent memory and don't plan to. So if you ever see anything like that, please uh, feel free to shoot me an email or even just reply in the comments and um, ignore it. And I will try to get them blocked and reported and all that good stuff. All right, let's jump into the fun part. Let's answer some questions. Question number one. My question is, I love the I-cord edging on the night shift shawl and the sizing of Free Your Fade. If I wanted to use I-cord edging on Free Your Fade, they just started the DK weight version, how would I make that work? The slip stitches at the start and end of each row are nice, but I love the smoothness of the I-cord. Is this possible? Uh, it totally, you can totally make this work. So basically what you're gonna need to do, I actually brought up the pattern so I could take a peek. Um, so right now that shawl has a single stitch on each edge that are like the frame of the shawl. For an I cord, you're gonna want three stitches on each edge. So really you just need to add two to each side. So I would recommend doing that right out the gate with your cast on. So for, for your fade, you're supposed to cast on five stitches. You're gonna to wanna to cast on nine. And that is what's gonna help add in your I cords for you. And basically you would start, you're just gonna to need to add the end of every single row, slip three with your yarn in front. So just like with the night shift shawl. You're just gonna slip three with yarn in front every single time and you're gonna wanna do any shaping you see. There is increasing and decreasing that happens in that shawl shape. And so you're just gonna wanna do it right inside of your three edge stitches on either edge. And you should be good to go. So I hope that that helps you along the way. And I think that will be absolutely beautiful. I really love an eye cord edge as well, which is why so many of my shawls and cowls have them because I think it looks so polished and beautiful. All right, oh, and I will say, which I actually talk about this, so I have a video on eye cords and changing colors. Um, maybe I'll just link that. I don't want to forget. I don't have any pens over here right now, I don't think. Um, okay, I'm gonna try my best to not forget to link that. You would think I would have pens here at my desk. Um, that would be smart of me. I think there might be a pack under these papers. Let's see. Yes! All kinds of pens, woohoo! These are actually a gift for my sister who knows me so well and my love of my love of pens. Thanks, Meg. Um, okay, let me just write a little quick note here. I shouldn't write it on this. I think just send it in somewhere. Okay. Okay, right. so 
so I cord video. So I will include that. It'll just help you along the way with changing colors. But it's actually really similar to the slip stitch edge. Oh, I like that pen. I haven't used these yet. All right, I'm just gonna keep these right here out where I know where they are. Okay, let's keep going. Question number two. Ooh, I like this one too. It kind of got me thinking. Hi, Andrea. I am wondering if there is a way to do a tubular cast on when I am going straight into stockinette knitting, or as they said it, knitting stockinettes, <laughs> flipping things around. Um, all my Google searching shows me tubular cast on for one by one or two by two ribbing. I would love to get the same effect for the bottom edge of a sweater that starts with stockinette. Would using a tubular cast on in this situation stop my resulting fabric from rolling up? Thank you for all your tips, tricks, and knowledge. So I don't know that it is gonna stop it from rolling up because it's just not, the reason that our stockinette stitch fabric rolls is because of the height difference of the knit stitch versus the purl stitch. And so it's almost like you've got two sides to your fabric and one pushes the other up, causing it to roll. Um, so I don't know that just a cast on edge is gonna fix that situation, but it doesn't hurt to try. And I would just start with a regular one by one tubular cast on because even though you're gonna have those pearls in that cast on edge, they really kind of disappear. That's why you can manipulate the one by one to work for two by two ribbing. So I think it would be really minimal um, and could look really nice. That I think that could be a really lovely edge to a stockinette stitch fabric. Um, so yeah, I would say experiment, maybe do it on kind of a large swatch and block it and see what happens and see if you like it. Um, and if it does help that curling, I would be curious. Yeah, my, my instinct says, I think you're still going to get at least a little curling, but you never know. So give it a try. See what happens. All right, next question. So I get a lot of emails about this one and I'm excited to tell you the answer. Uh, my question is about the shifty sweater. I really want to make one and I'm gathering up my yarn selection to hopefully cast on soon, but I'd love this as a cardigan. Just curious if you will ever release a shifty cardigan. I've never steeped before, but not afraid to try. Just don't know if I can go it alone. There are many F, uh, finished objects on Ravelry, but it's overwhelming to look through them all to see if any knitters made good notes on how they turned theirs into cardies. What advice can you give on how to try this on my own? Or even better, will you kindly design one for us to follow? So the exciting news is right actually in this bag here is what I am naming my shift again. So it is done. I have just a little bit further to go um, and it's coming. So I know it's been a long wait. Uh, it took me quite a bit of trial and error to get that pattern to what I wanted it to be, especially because, and I have seen there are a couple Cardis out there. There is somebody who steaked it and there is someone who I think just worked it back and forth. The thing is with that color changing yarn, working it back and forth can create any changes in color to start to create what almost look like misaligned stripes in your cardigan. And then um, unless you have a sewing machine, I really don't recommend steaking mosaic knitting. Guess how I know. <laughs> um, I tried sticking some mosaic knitting. I did samples, but I didn't just like do it into a sweater. Um, and everything really wanted to unravel. So I had to play around a lot to get this to work out um, to the best, the best that I think I, it can be. So it's coming. Thank you for your patience. I've definitely had some of you emailing me like, when is the shifty cardigan coming? Um, but it's been a labor of love and I hope to bring it to you pretty soon. So I will definitely keep you updated on that as it gets ready for the public. 
Okay. Next question. I am at a knitting standstill. I am an adventurous beginner and have made hats and a sweater. I have downloaded patterns from different designers and no matter what I do, I cannot get gauge. I think part of my problem is that I am not using the yarn brands specified in the patterns. I have tried to pay attention to yards, weight of the substituted yarn, but always seem to come up with lots of yarn, but incorrect gauge. I've also changed from metal to wood needles. Please help. Okay, so I wish that I could chat with you in person to help diagnose what is going on here because it can really be a number of things. My guess is that if you switched from metal to wood, that you are a substantially looser knitter and you're having trouble knitting tight enough to meet gauge. So maybe that's right because wood needles are going to help tighten you up. Um, if the opposite is true, and I'm reading into that when I shouldn't be, if you tend to knit tighter than what is called for and you need to loosen up your gauge, you don't want to use wood or I would, I would recommend sticking with metal. Um, but it sounds like you've already attempted switching your needle material, which is a great place to start. Um, when it comes to yarn, so you are paying attention to the yards and weight of the substituted yarn, which can be definitely a helpful clue on how to substitute. Um, one thing I would recommend is Clara Park's Book of Yarn because that might kind of give you some insight onto, into why if you are hitting the same yards to weight ratio as is called for in the pattern, what else could make that yarn so different that you can't hit gauge? Um, because that, that can happen. Um, so yeah, there could be a lot there. I, it does make me wonder, are you still not having the correct weight of yarn as in fingering sport, worsted, DK, etc. Um, so one thing I might try right away is actually if you have a local yarn store, and I know not everybody does, but if you do have a local yarn store, I think that might be really helpful because you could go in, you could ask for guidance on yarn substitution. You could help you know, lead, have them lead you to what would be some good substitutes for the yarn that is in that pattern because at a yarn store, they've tried so many of those yarns that they're selling, if not all of them, that they'll be able to be like, okay, with the qualities that are in the yarn that are called for in the pattern, this is really what's going to be your ideal substitute. Um, they might also be able to, you could bring in your swatch um, and have them look at it and they'll be able to better diagnose maybe what's going on there. Um, without me being able to see some of that, it's a little hard for me to know what the issue might be, but don't get discouraged. Um, you will, you, you'll figure it out. I have talked about this before. I did have a really good friend who was such a loose knitter that she couldn't knit anything that called, like she couldn't knit socks because they called for a small needle size that for her to get gauge, she would have to go to like a triple zero or something like there wasn't even a needle small enough for her to get gauge because she just knit really loosely and what helped her was switching knitting styles so that is something to consider as well um that might feel i know a little daunting if you are you know you said you're an adventurous beginner i don't know how long you've been knitting for but that really might be the trick i also had another friend back when i lived in michigan who i taught to knit and she was an extremely tight knitter, like so tight. Um, she made a slipper pattern of mine and they could fit, that's for adults, and they could fit her daughter. <laughs> so it was just very, very tight. So she ended up again switching her knitting style and that really helped. And it felt so much better for her hands, probably because the fabric wasn't as stiff. She wasn't, you know, she wasn't as tight with everything that it just became way more joyful for her. Like she really enjoyed knitting more after she switched. So friend number one switched from continental to English to tighten up. Friend number two, who was a really tight knitter, switched to continental from English to help loosen up. So that is another thing that I would really recommend considering um, if 
if it is that drastic and maybe it really just comes down to how you're knitting within a given style right now. Um, the other thing to think about is, I mean, maybe you don't say here necessarily what um, patterns you'd like to knit. I'm guessing sweaters, but one thing to think about too is maybe shawls and other things that don't necessarily have to fit your body in a really specific way. Um, just to help you through the frustration you might be feeling right now from like not getting gauge on a pattern where it really, really matters like a sweater. Um, but good luck. Please let us know how it goes. If you figure any of it out, I'd love to hear. All right, last question. Last year, I knit the Oxbow cardigan for my seven-year-old son. Big thanks to your pattern support. Yay, Megan! <laughs> um, it was my first sweater knit. Oh, that's so, so sweet. And he actually wants to wear it. Yay! Uh, but he does want it to have a button or two. Any suggestions for best way to add buttons without having to re-knit the shawl collar? 100%. So I would use toggles. Um, or you could even use big buttons and still do the same idea. But basically what you can do is just attach the buttons on a side, however many you would like. And then on the other side, just knit some little I-cords and attach those as a little button loop. And it works great for toggles. Again, you could even do it for like a big button. Um, and that's a really great way to add a buttonhole without having to re-knit anything. You could also do an afterthought buttonhole where you could snip into it and um, you have to unravel it and then kind of reinforce it. So that is an option, but if you, that, you don't have a ton of stitches there because that's a bulky weight sweater I would just do an I cord I would use a finer yarn than what the sweater calls for I wouldn't use bulky yarn to make your I cord for the button loops but if you can find a yarn that is similar color to what you used for the sweater but in a lighter weight like fingering weight or even sport or DK to make your little I cord I would actually stick probably between fingering and sport weight if it were me but you can make anything work um, but yeah, just knit a little I-cord and you can find lots of tutorials on how to knit an I-cord if you've never done that. Um, but yeah, and I think that would be so adorable. I don't think my son's oxbow fits him anymore. I should go look. My kids really need some new sweaters. I just need more hours in the day, right? <laughs> um, all right. Well, I feel like I kind of got through those really fast. I'm already done and I don't really have any show and tell. I did finish building my loom. Maybe I said that last week. Had I finished by then? I think I had. But I am, I've taken a little time every day to start dressing it for a towel project. So I have already this morning I'm already threaded through my heddles so I really just have to tension it I have to wrap it around um my apron rod right that's what it's called still need to learn all my weaving terminology but I'm very excited so I have just been doing little bits of that I also have a number of spinning projects I'm super excited about but basically I am face to face with some pretty major work deadlines <laughs> and I'm like knit Andrea knit I actually this morning was knitting downstairs because I was like I can't get distracted <laughs> by all the other fun things I want to be doing um so there's an, there's like multiple sewing projects I'm ready to start too how do we get more time in the day that's that's the question but I have no bee friends here today so that's nice I do think maybe there's a hive somewhere that yeah whole whole nother thing I'd rather just weave and spin and not worry about it um but yeah I guess that's kind of it it's a little sad I don't have any show and tell for you right now you want to see the bat I'm spinning I'll show you that that would be fun and it's so beautiful and includes some oh, I mean look at even from there so beautiful La, da, 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 da. so this is from crux fibers they are located in Canada and I love oranges and blues. Oranges and blues 
are my go-tos. And this has just little peaks of both. And I think it's just so beautiful. I love it. So this is what has really been calling me. I've got it set up on my flat iron over there and I'm trying really hard to just not look at it because I need to finish my other work. Um, but I do try to gift myself a little bit of time each morning with my coffee to do just create a fill up work because I think that's really important to fill ourselves back up. Uh, as a chronic empty tanker over here, I, I think that it's important. So um, maybe I'll give myself a few minutes for that tomorrow. Alrighty, well, I guess I will end this here. Thank you so much for joining me and it just means the world. I hope to see you back here next week. And oh, I have a pattern release on Tuesday for a sweater that I have called the Big Cozy Cardi. And I cannot wait to share it with all of you. I have a weird rule where I don't allow myself to wear a pattern until it's been released. So I am very excited, especially with the weather here has been so glorious. So I cannot wait to wear my Big Cozy sweater, Big Cozy Cardi. And I hope that you love it as well. So if you are not signed up to my newsletter, I highly recommend signing up. You can find a link below in the show description. And um, I always give my newsletter subscribers a special little discount because I'm so grateful to them for following along with my newsletter. Just like all y'all who follow along here. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a great weekend. If you are in the Northern Hemisphere as well, I hope you get to enjoy some fall weather because that is what I'm going to do. All right. I'll see you next week. Bye.